Hello, now that you've been accepted into Gordon State College and you went through that process, these are the next steps that you need to take in order to get registered, get paid, uh, get your courses paid for, get into your courses, and know what you need to do to carry on um, now that you are officially part um, of Gordon State College. So the first thing is you need to know what classes you need to take. Um, and more than likely, we're going to give you a list of classes that you need to take for your pre-courses. Um, this is in the form of like a worksheet that we send to you. It has a listing of all the pre-courses required for the elementary program. Um, and we will highlight the ones that you still have left to take. And this will be based upon the classes that you're transferring in, um, if you have any transferred in classes. So um, we'll have a paper that will, that will be given to you for that, uh, that will tell you what classes you still need to take. Also, you can look up this information in your DegreeWorks account, which lives inside of BannerWeb. And so you would log into your BannerWeb account, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. You would choose Student and then DegreeWorks. And then you'll see a listing of all the classes that you've taken, where they count, and what you have left to take. So essentially the same thing as what you would be sent um, in the paper document. So either one of these will, um, will help you know what classes, what pre-courses you still need to take um, before you start the education program. It is going to be your responsibility at this point to keep up with this list. Um, this is not something that we provide every semester. It's not something that we even keep up with. Um, so it's something that when it's sent to you, you need to keep it in your files to know what classes you need to take and when um, and to track your own progress with that um, and know when it is time for you to apply to the program. So again, keep up with that worksheet that we send you as well as use your degree works as a backup. Also, having that list of knowing what courses you have left to take, we encourage you to go ahead and make a plan for yourself. We can help, help you with this, but um, some things that you want to keep in mind is that the education program, which is the traditional as well as the pair part of teacher, only starts in the fall semesters. So you're going to want to finish up probably in the spring or summer semester, ideally. Um, if not, you're going to be in between semesters, you know, having completed your pre-courses but not ready to start the um, program. So you want to kind of set yourself up to finish your pre-courses in the spring or summer semesters. Also know that you're going to need a 2.75 GPA when you finish all of your pre-courses. So all the ones on the list, you're going to have to have a 2.75 GPA to be accepted into the program. Um, so you want to kind of track that. If you know that you've got uh, a lower GPA, um, what you can do is retake courses that you scored lower in. So you might save the last semester here at Gordon to retake courses and say that you made like a D in sociology, you could retake it and make a B and that would overall raise your GPA. So if you know you've got some low courses and you know you're going to have to boost your GPA, that might be an option for you as well, but you want a lot of time to do that, a lot of semester um, to be able to do that. So um, when you're doing this, you want to determine how many courses you want to take per semester in order to start the education program um, when you plan to start it. So you want to not only know what courses you need to take, but then how you're going to get this done, what order you're going to do them in, um, and have that plan ready to uh, before we register you. So here's a breakdown of what our semesters look like. We have several semesters. Um, our fall semester starts at the beginning of August and runs to the beginning of December. It's 15 weeks. We also have our spring semester, which runs from the beginning of January to the beginning of May. It's also 15 weeks. So those are our two staples, or the fall, full fall semester, the full, fall, uh, the full spring semester. Um, we also have second half fall and second half spring. Those start a little bit later. So um, the second half um, fall starts in October and goes to December, so it's only eight weeks. You still get full credit for the course, but it's a shorter amount of time. Same thing with spring. It starts at the beginning of March and goes till May, so it's a, a couple of... Uh, a couple months shorter, eight weeks um, instead, but you still get the full credit. So say that you weren't able to start in August or you weren't able to start in January, you might be able to start in October or March as well. So um, you can kind of bend and flex those classes as much as you need to, but keep in mind that we don't have, um, most courses are offered in the full fall and spring semesters, only a select are offered over the summer in their second half semesters. We also have summer semester. Uh, we have two summers uh, semesters. We have summer one, which is runs from the end of May to the end of June, so four weeks. And then we have second summer, which runs from the end of June to the end of July, which is also four weeks. Um, because these are so short, we don't recommend you taking more than two or three classes in any one summer session. But this is where, um, how you can know when classes will be offered and when you have the opportunity to add in other courses. So now that you know what classes you need to take and you have a plan for when you're going to take them, um, you want to actually get registered for your classes. So we will help you register the first time for your classes. Um, we'll get you your schedule made. However, after basically we just would need to know how many classes you want to take that semester to know what to you know what what um, how many classes to register you for. 
um, and what classes you want to take if they are available. After that, uh, after your first semester, you're going to be uh, prepared to register yourself for classes and you'll be able to do that because you'll have access to register yourself and you also have the ability um, to see the courses that you have left to take so you'll know what classes to register yourself for um, and you'll do this through banner web um, and then here is a, a link um, that shows you how to go about registering yourself so um, we'll get you registered the first semester but after that you will be expected to do it yourself and this um, I'm going to open this link for you so you can kind of see how it works so this is an image of the PDF that is um, linked in the PowerPoint and basically you're going to log into banner web choose student registration choose register for classes you'll be able to search the uh, term that you're looking for and search the classes which would be on your sheet um, of the classes that you need to take and then you'll be able to add yourself into those courses um, be them online or if you're taking them uh, face to face you know you would juggle um, and look at the days and times that they're going to be offered but of course if they're online it would just say online um, so this will take you through the process of registering getting your summary and all of that jazz so you want to make sure to follow this closely um, to make sure that you do get registered for your classes um, from from here on out after your first semester after we make your first schedule all right, so the next step is after you know what classes you're going to be taking and you have yourself registered for classes, you want to go ahead and set up your login information. And this is going to be very important that you need to be able to log into your banner web and you need to be able to log into your Gordon email um, from Go. Now that you're an accepted student, you're going to want to be able to do that and reference those because that's how we're going to communicate with you. So um, the first thing is once you have finally been accepted, you will be able to look up your login credentials. Um, and these are the steps for doing this. So you're going to go to this web link, which I'll show you in a second you're going to answer the security information and then it's going to actually give you a, a page and it will tell you this is your 929 number this is your Gordon email username this is your Gordon email um, and you'll want to keep this information handy to you because this is what you'll be logging in um, to our different interfaces with so your 929 number you'll use this um, for to log into banner web it'll be it'll just start with 929 so for example 929 might be your 929 number then you'll have a Gordon email username and that's going to be your first and last initial and then some numbers so it might be AS123456 might be your Gordon email username then if you put on at gordonstate.edu at the end of it that is now your Gordon email so this will all be displayed to you but you do want to look up this login information you should have it available to you as soon as you are accepted as a student so that you'll be able to um, go ahead and, and set up your accounts so this is the link that I put in the um, in the PowerPoint for you. This is what it looks like. You would um, log in with this information. Make sure to use capital letters appropriately here. Um, once you do that, it would actually list out your 929 number, your Gordon email, and all of that stuff for you. So that's how you can look up your um, login information. So now with that information, you're going to be able to actually set up your Gordon email. And you want to do this immediately because um, once you are an accepted student, we um, email you through your Gordon email. We'll stop using your personal email. So um, you need to make sure that you check it every day. Um, once you get your Gordon email set up the first time, we also encourage you to download the Microsoft Outlook app on your phone and just log in with your Gordon email. And then it would automatically be there for you. Um, you can get your get and receive your emails kind of on the fly there um, and make your life a lot easier. So set up your Gordon an email first and then download the Microsoft Outlook app on your phone and you'll be able to go from there um, at getting your email. So um, after you know your email username, you want to set up your Gordon email password. Um, so you're going to go to this link, you're going to answer the security question, and then you're going to create a new password. This password has to have uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers or symbols, have at least 10 characters, and cannot have your name in it. Also make sure you see the successfully reset message at the top. If not, you haven't reset it. And then you'll be able to actually go in and log into your email um, from the web. So let me show you how you do that on our website. So this is the link that um, is in the PowerPoint slide. Here you would put in your username. Um, this is given to you on the ear earlier page that we talked about. So it might be something like AS123456 or something like that. It will have two letters and some numbers in it. You'll put that in and submit it. Then it will ask you to reset your password. Make sure you follow these qualifiers for your password. Um, and then make sure you see successfully reset. At that point, you've successfully reset your password and you should be able to log into your Gordon email. And then to log into your Gordon email uh, from the web, you would just go to our Gordon website, scroll to the very bottom, choose Gordon email, and then log in with your Gordon email username and the password that you set up. Um, and that will let you into your Gordon email. And of course, we really encourage you to download it on your uh, Microsoft Outlook um, or download the Microsoft Outlook app and have it on your phone for you. All right, so now that you have set up your um, 
record an email you and are able to get into that the next thing is you want to set up your banner web account um, banner web is going to be used to register for classes so if you are going to be someone that's registering yourself this semester um, you will be using banner web to do that um, you will also accept your financial aid there make online payments through your student account center if you have a balance left to pay um, it's also where you can view your degree works which we talked about earlier the classes that you need um, based upon um, the pre-courses that you're bringing in and then it's also where you'll see your final your final grades for the semester so you'll do quite a few things in banner web so this is the process of, for setting it up um, you would still you need to know your 929 number which you got earlier from the login page um, and then you would want to set up your pin and then after you set up your pin you'll be able to log into banner web and so the process is is to go to the Gordon website go to the bottom and choose banner web input your 929 number in and then choose forgot pin and you're able to set up a new pin of six numbers and then log into banner from there so let me show you how that looks in real life all right so we're on the Gordon web page and we're just going to scroll down to the very bottom we're going to choose banner web and then we're going to put in our 929 here our, 9, our full 929 number that we got um, from our login or look up our credentials then we're going to do forgot pin it's going to ask a secu security question and then we can reset that pin of six numbers um, and then at that point you'll be able to log into banner web all right, so now that you're logged into your Gordon email and your banner web, you've got your two major logins taken care of, and that will help you um, in staying in communication and getting all the information that you need now that you're accepted. So the next thing is understanding our types of online courses that we have. If you're doing our Pair Part of Teacher program, you're definitely going to be taking online courses. Um, if you are taking you can take face-to-face -face courses as well and you might end up taking some online so it's important that you know up front um, a little bit about the different types of online courses because it can get a little bit confusing so Gordon actually has two types of online courses um, you receive full credit for both of them they both go on your transcript the same um, so there's really no difference there in terms of what you earn credit for um, the difference is what they're called how you log into um, what they look like that kind of thing um, and it's important that you know the distinction because sometimes you might be taken all of one type all of the other type or a blend of both um, so it's it's a good idea up front to know what they are so you're not confused so Type one um, is the Gordon State Online Courses. These are taught by our professors. They run through our Brightspace by D2L platform. They follow our college schedule. So they would start our first start date, our first end date, have all the same breaks, that kind of thing. Um, you will log into your log into D2L using your Gordon email username and password that you use um, to get into your Gordon email that you use to get into everything else. Um, you won't see your classes until the first day of class. So if you know classes start January 10th, on January 10th is when you'll see them. Um, you won't be able to log in on the 8th or 9th or whenever you register to see your classes. You only see them on the first official start date of the class. Um, and then this is the actual link to log in to D2L. Um, so this, I'll show you what the, the login page looks like here. And this one is for your Gordon State Online classes, which you may take only Gordon State Online classes. Um, but this is just one of the types of online classes that we have. So just for reference, this is what our um, Brightspace by D2L looks like. It'll have the Gordon logo up here at the top. It'll say Gordon State College Brightspace by D2L. So when I refer to or if you talk about Gordon State Online Classes, this is where this is going to be. And you would just click here and log in with your email, username, and password, and you're able to get right in to actually um, to, to log in and see your courses from there. Okay, so now let's talk about the second type of um, Gordon Online courses, or type of online courses you might have at Gordon. These are not Gordon Online, these are called eCore courses. Um, again, you get the same full credit, um, same, uh, the login information is a little bit different. These courses are taught by professors in the University System of Georgia, so they might not be a Gordon professor. Um, they use a different platform, you're not going to be logging into RD2L, you'll be logging into something called GoView, which I'll show you what that looks like in a second. It's just a different portal, it's actually still D2L. Um, um, it's still D2L, but it just looks a little bit different. Uh, the schedule might be a little bit different um, in terms of sometimes eCore has a different start date or end date. So you just want to be um, careful of making sure that you are on the right start date or end date for that course. Um, and you will log in to GoView using a different um, username and password than what you would use for RD2L. That really stumps students if they're taking Gordon Online and eCore um, and they're logging into some courses for Gordon Online and they're logging into some courses for eCore um, there's two different logins and that can that can mess up students so you want to make sure that you know that um, you won't still won't be able to see your courses until the first day of class and then these are the links um, of how to how to log into GoView so let me show you what these look like 
So if you are taking an eCore class, this is where you're going to log into GoView and you see it is a little bit different. It says GoView up here at the top. These are going to be for your, your eCore courses. Also, this link is in the PowerPoint. It explains to you how to get your um, your login information for eCore because it is a little bit different. It'll explain how the username is a little bit different um, and how you get your password for it. So that is important to know because we do have two types of online courses. You could potentially have both of them running at the same time. Um, and so you want to make sure that you are logging into the right place and that you're using the right credentials to get into the right place. So one more thing when talking about eCore, um, if you are going to take an eCore class for the first time and you've never taken an eCore course, um, they do require that you do a online tutorial. Um, so the link is here, and you would do this online tutorial. Um, you want to set up your Gordon email username um, and pass, you want to set up your Gordon email and your 929 number um, and have that set up first because when you do this uh, tutorial, it's going to ask you to put in that information, um, and so you'll need to have that set up and know what it is. So you want to have set up your Gordon email and your banner web before you do this. It's just an online tutorial. Um, after you do it, uh, it will allow you to register for an eCore course from here on out. So we can't put you into an eCore course until you've done this and waited 24 hours for them to take the hold off of your account. But we encourage you to go ahead and do it right out the gates if you know you're going to be taking a lot of online courses. Um, just in case you do end up having to take an eCore class, we're able to put you right into it. You're able to register yourself right into it, and you don't get hit with that hold. Um, you don't have to do it for Gordon Online, but you do have to do it for eCore. But again, you very well can end up taken some of both so it's worth doing and this is what this eCore tutorial looks like it's just a web page and you basically come down and read um, and go through the different components and at the end there's a little form that you fill out that you put in your Gordon email username information and your 929 number and then within 24 hours your hold is taken off and you can register for the eCore course all right, so the next thing is um, you have, you know what classes you need to take. You have yourself registered. You are into your Gordon um, email. You are into your banner web. You um, know if you're taking online, what type of online courses you're taking, Gordon Online and or eCore. Um, and now you want to pay for your courses. And so um, we... Um, to pay for your courses, you first want to accept any financial aid that you might have sitting in your account in BannerWeb. Um, you get financial aid by applying um, for federal financial aid through our fa through the FAFSA website. This is a federal um, website. You want to make sure to use Gordon's code when you fill out the FAFSA. Here's Gordon's code. Um, it does require like tax information, that kind of stuff, so it does take a little while to fill it out. But you would just go to this link, fill it out, make sure to put in Gordon's code so that Gordon's financial aid can get your um, data to, to be able to see what you're, what you're awarded. Um, this needs to be done early um, because it takes a while for the federal government to give that to get that money to Gordon. So you need to do this pretty early if you're expecting to use um, financial aid. Um, also here's some more information about financial aid and how you can contact them. Our office doesn't work directly with um, financial aid, so you would have to reach out to financial aid to get really any specifics. But we do want you to know that financial aid is available if you apply for it through the federal um, the FAFSA website. Now, let's say that you have went through BannerWeb, you've accepted any financial aid that you have. Um, now you need to make an online payment of any of the of any balance that you have left. So say that you accepted your financial aid, you still have a balance left, what do I need to do? You would just need to pay the balance online through the Student Account Center. So there's the link to the Student Account Center. And then here is the information for our bursar's office, who are, who are the ones that handle those payments. Um, so they'll be able to, to tell you, um, you know, if, if you are fully paid, what you have left to pay, that kind of thing. Um, very important that you have to pay your balance by the fee deadline. If not, they will drop your schedule. So make sure that you go ahead, as soon as you get registered, go ahead and get on top of this. As soon as you have a schedule, go ahead, accept your financial aid, go ahead and start making those payments. Because if not, um, you run the risk of your schedule getting dropped, and then you have to start back over from scratch. So in addition to doing all of that, that is just kind of getting into um, getting, getting your classes set up, getting into your classes. Um, from there, there's also the potential that you will need to petition courses. And this is in the case of you are transferring in courses from other colleges that don't naturally align with our, with our courses, but they might. They're very close. We think that they might count. Um, and you want to petition to say, will you please take a closer, closer look at these to see if they will count. Um, oftentimes it's worth doing. It is a little bit more paperwork. It is oftentimes worth doing though because 
it could mean the difference of you having to take an extra course. So um, we will often, most of the time when we're looking at your courses, tell you, hey, I would recommend you petition these courses. Um, so we'll kind of give you guidance on that. And then this is the process for doing it. This is not something you have to do immediately. Um, you know, of course you want to get registered for your classes first. Of course you want to pay for them. Of course you want to know where you're logging in. And of course you want to set up your Gordon email and be on our web first. This is something that can kind of happen after the first couple of weeks of class once you kind of get it going. Um, but it is something that you want to get on top of because you want these petitions in place to count so that you'll have a, a really accurate idea of what you have left to take. So um, there, this is the link to the petition that you'll need to fill out. Um, you need to fill one out for each course that you're petitioning. You might not have any courses to petition. You might have four or five. Um, it just depends specifically on the nature of, of your particular classes. Um, but you would want to do one, it's one course per petition. Um, so you would fill out this page. You would just fill out the last page, and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. So you're going to fill out the last page. And then um, here's a video that we've created that tells you exactly how to fill out the form. Make sure to watch this video and fill it out just so, because if you don't follow this video and you don't fill out the form correctly, they're not going to approve it. Um, and it will have all been, you know, you'll have to go back and redo it and, and, and edit your um, petition and it will just be messy. So make sure that you go ahead and um, follow this video exactly. Um, and then once your petition is completed, you would fill it out, you would sign it, you would email it to our dean here, and then it goes through the process of, of getting approved. And it does have to change hands quite a few times at our, at at our institution to get it approved so you just ha kind of have to be patient with it and that's why I definitely say start early on that um, but you should get a Gordon email when it has officially been approved and you would know that this course did get good did count and therefore you don't have to take it so here's what the link to that video or that um, here's the the link to what that uh, PDF looks like that, that I linked in the PowerPoint notice it's a lot of information so you'd want to read through this information um, but the piece that you have to actually fill out the form that you have to fill out is actually at the bottom here it's just this one page this one last page that says academic request form so you'd want to fill out all this student information you'd want to choose course substitution which is what you're doing in this case um, petitioning for a course to count for this and then you would want to fill out this information and sign it and in the video I'm linked in the PowerPoint it tells you exactly what to what to fill out here and you want to make sure you do so accordingly all right and so once you get those filled out again you send them to our Dean and they will start on the process of getting approved so now um, let's move forward and say that we have registered ourselves, we've paid for our classes, we know when we're logging in. Um, what do I need to do when classes actually start? First of all, you want to make sure you know the date when they actually start. Um, but then also you want to make sure to go ahead and get logged in on the very first day of classes. Um, so as soon as you're able to get in, go ahead and log in because um, there's going to be content in your courses that you'll need to complete. You want to make sure to review the syllabus very carefully um, and make sure that there are going to be some assignments. We call those attendance verification assignments. Assignments. Um, they're usually easy assignments, things like a syllabus quiz, a discussion post, stuff like that. You want to do that very early on in the course um, because we have a drop date. If you do not do these attendance verification activities by this drop date, they will remove remove you from the um, from the from the course, and you, your schedule will essentially be dropped. And then you'll have to go through that whole process of getting reinstated, and it turns into another big mess. So make sure that you go ahead and get logged in on the first day of class. Go ahead and look at all your courses. Go ahead and do those attendance verification activities so that you have it in place that you know, you're in the course, you're doing the work, um, and that you don't get dropped um, for that. Um, because if you do get dropped from your courses, there's another uh, petition that you have to do to get reinstated, and that just prolongs the process. So make sure that you go ahead um, on the first day of class and log in and get started. So here's a summary of um, kind of what we've gone over. Um, now that you've been accepted, a whole nother list of things that you need to be working on. Um, the first thing is to know what classes you need to take and make a plan of how you want to take those. Go ahead and get registered for your classes. Get logged into your Gordon email and banner web. Make sure to check your Gordon email every day. Accept your financial aid and make your online payment so that your schedule isn't dropped. That has to be done before the beginning of school. Um, know which courses you're getting into if you're doing Gordon online and or eCore, e um, where and how to log into each of those platforms. Um, go ahead and complete any petitions that you have so those can be processed. And on the first day of class, make sure to get into your Gordon online and or eCore, whichever one you're doing or both, um, and go ahead and do those attendance verification activities um, to avoid being dropped from the class. All right, so that is what, you know, you're kind of looking at right 
at this moment. Um, and then now moving forward, you just want to keep tabs on the, the um, applying to the education program. So about a semester before you are finishing up um, your pre-courses and you're getting ready to start the education program, you want to go ahead and apply to the education program itself. So I have the two links here depending on which track you're going. If you're going the traditional pathway with your own campus classes that do not require you be hired as a peer pro, you're going to use this link. Um, if you're going to be doing the peer pro to teacher pathway, which is online classes that uh, but it does require that you are a pair pro you're going to use this link so make sure that you're looking at the correct um, link and that's going to give you all the information in terms of the application you need to complete and all the different forms that you need and so on each of those web pages these are the forms that you need to fill out in order to apply to the education program so you have the application itself it does involve an essay you'll have two disposition forms to have completed three recommendation forms to have completed you'll also have the GACE ethics to complete this is done through our professional standards commission um, state of uh, the state of Georgia's professional standards commission this is something that all uh, schools have to do this is not a Gordon requirement this is for any school uh, with teacher education prep um, this is a one-time online course you'll get a you'll get a certificate after you complete it and you just need to send it in then we also have the GACE program admissions or the PAA assessment that you need to complete this is made up of three exams reading writing and math some people can't exempt them based upon their SAT or ACT scores um, these are usually taken in a testing center. Your scores should automatically be reported to us, but it's a good idea to send them in as well. So um, these are the things that you need to do. The big one is getting this um, PAA assessment going because you have to register for it. You have to wait a couple months to be able to take it. You have to take it, make sure you pass it. There's, you know, there's, there's kind of a waiting game involved in that. So um, go ahead and do the application disposition and recommendation forms. Get those sent in. The ethics you can work on kind of as you go, um, but the PAA you want to go ahead and get signed up for pretty soon, um, knowing that you're getting ready to start um, the program in the next semester. So I'll show you where those um, web pages are. So if you're on the Gordon website and you just search traditional education program, um, it should pull the website for it. This is the traditional track. Gives you all the information that you need, but specifically it gives you the um, application, the recommendation forms, the disposition forms, and then it gives you information about how to sign up for the GACE Ethics and Program Admission. So all of that, all of the documentation that you need to um, to uh, apply to the education programs here, and it also gives you information about where to send it to, where to submit that application information. Same thing up here if you're looking for the Pair Pro to Teacher, you just search Pair Pro to Teacher and you'll have it right here and then same information and then just down here at the bottom you'll have your application recommendation form dispositions um, GACE information where to send it to all of that and again that's something that you want to work on about the semester before you start trying to um, when you're going to finish up your pre-courses getting ready to start the um, education program you want to go ahead and get this underway all right so I know that was a lot of information, um, but now that you are gotten through the process of being accepted, which is a feat in itself, um, now you'll know what you need to do um, to kind of get started and then go ahead and get, get yourself underway. Um, and then from here on out, pretty much it'll just be a matter of making sure you're registered for the classes you need to be registered for, you know where your classes are, um, you're paying for them, getting into them, getting the, the coursework done, and applying to the education program when it is time.